Well, good morning to everybody on this wonderful Sunday morning. Uh, always good to be together to share the word, and we've got so much to be blessed about. I'm sure wherever you are this morning that you can join me in just praising God for the amazing rain we've had. What a blessing. What a way this new year, 2021, has started with God just pouring out the rain on Rustenburg and other parts of the land. And we're so grateful, and we just give God all the glory and all the praise. We also want to congratulate Donry and Michelle on their daughter um, and the birth of their daughter, and they're all very excited. And, um, yeah, there's another baby, and the church is increasing, and children's ministry will increase as well. So we've got a lot to be thankful for this morning so much to be grateful for. And as we open in prayer, let's just give God thanks. Father, we thank you this morning for your grace and your love and your mercy. We thank you for the beautiful rain we've had. We thank you Michelle's birth went well with her little girl. And Lord, we thank you for all your goodness and your mercy in everything we do. Lord, we just bless you for your word and we pray as we look at your word this morning. Lord, you will minister to every one of our hearts, and Lord, that we'll just get a better understanding of you in Jesus' name. Amen. And um, I, I just want to share something before I share the word with you this morning, and uh, last week we were looking at Emmanuel, God with us, and, um, but before I share that, um, I, I want to ask you, Currently and in lockdown and everything that's, that's happening, how is your praise thermometer? Are you worshiping and praising God? Because to worship God and to praise God is so vital for our spirit life. And, um, you, you, you know, whether you're worshiping, listening to CDs, whether you are on, on YouTube, or whether you just sing to the Lord a new song, it doesn't matter. But praise and worship is powerful, and we need to keep praise and worship going. And I just want to share a couple of things with you. Um, it's been a very difficult year for me, and from middle of December to now, I had a lot of issues and um, attacks physically and that. But the one thing I learned is it's wonderful to praise God with his word. And so we're going to be putting some scriptures up, and wherever you're watching, won't you join me in praising God, giving him worship right from his word? And we're going to look at Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5. And it says, and, and let's do this together. You're going to see it on the screen. Let's all confess this together as worship to God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all my iniquities, who heals all my diseases, who redeems my life from destruction, who crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies my mouth with good things, so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isn't that a good thing to praise God for and to get in your heart and to remember. Well, let's go to another psalm, which really just lifts my spirit up. Psalm 145, verses 1 to the first part of verse 3. I will extol you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever with grateful, affectionate praise. Every day, I will bless you affectionately and gratefully praise you. Yes, I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Do you see just by getting God's word and using it as a form of praise and giving thanks to him, it lifts your spirit up. There's another scripture that, that's not going to come up, but um, you, you know, it's one I often use, especially if the devil wants to remind me of my past or tempt me. I remember 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And I worship the Lord like this from that scripture. Lord, 
I praise you that being in Christ, I'm a new creation. All things have passed away and all things have become new. I praise you and glorify your name for that. Do you see how from God's word we can just worship him and give him honor? And it works wonders when the devil comes up against you to praise God for those things. Through what I've gone through, I've realized that praise just shatters what the enemy wants to do. How about just praising God for the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, the power of that blood, that blood that will never lose its power, that blood that washed you and cleansed you and uh, just washed your sin away. And for the stripes Jesus bore for you on the cross, that by those stripes you are healed and give him praise and give him glory for that. And I'm praying this year there's going to be a spirit of praise in the church, praising God. He's worthy of praise. And above all that's happening, God is worthy of our praise. One I really love is Philippians 4.13. Praise you, Lord, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. How powerful is that? When you're feeling you can't make it, when you're feeling you can't press through, you take God's word and worship him with it. Lord, I praise you that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And um, so right now, if you're joining us on live stream, why don't you just stand up wherever you are and just take a minute or two just to say, praise you, Lord. I give you thanks. I glorify your name. Hallelujah. God, you good. Just do something like that, and you will see how you'll feel a change within your spirit, man. I want to praise the Lord with one last scripture from 2 Timothy 1.7, and I Praise God, and God gets all the glory and honor for this. In you, Lord, we do not have a spirit of fear, but you, O Lord, have equipped us with a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. Praise your holy name. Church, we do not have a spirit of fear, and we need to praise God for that and worship him for it. Well, after that, a little bit of praise. I'm sure we're ready for today's word. Last week, we looked at the scripture declaring that Christ was Emmanuel, God with us. The Hebrew with us is God, and I love that. But God is with us. Literally, it means God is always with us. He is the I am. <clears throat> he is the Alpha and Omega. He will never leave us, never forsake us. And when Jesus was born, they said his name is Emmanuel, God with us. And Christ living in us means God is with us. And what a powerful thing, how encouraging to get us to press in. We looked at Daniel in the lion's den. God was with him. And those lions couldn't touch him. Moses at the Red Sea. What does he do? God was with him and opened the sea. We looked at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire in that furnace, and there was a fourth man. God was with them, and they came out that fire. Church, it's a powerful thing when we can get the rhema word in our hearts that God is with us. Now, there's one man that definitely knew God was with him, and that was King David. <laughs> he knew his covenant God was with him, when he faced Goliath, when he faced the bear, when he faced the lion, when he faced the armies. And David knew his covenant God was with him. He knew that God would not leave him. And David went through many issues. And David went through many shakings. But yet he knew God was with him. And often there are times of shaking before we have our breakthrough. And I wonder how many of you this morning are wanting breakthrough in something, maybe breakthrough in your workplace, in your family, in your finances, in direction. There's so many things we can come to the Lord for breakthrough. But in the scripture we're going to look at today, David gives us a key. He gives us one of the most vital things to which opens the way for a breakthrough. We often do things. I don't know if you like me. <laughs> uh, I'm sometimes just spontaneous. And I remember Tish, my wife, would sort of bring the balance in my life, you know. <laughs> but 
often I was just spontaneous and want to do things because God's with us. And, um, and then sometimes it just doesn't work out. I don't know if anybody has experienced that as well. If you have, you know, just, you can't wink at me. I can't see you. Just wave at yourself. But then we really sort of say, but God, I thought you were with us. And this didn't work out. Well, I want to share this great scripture, and I've ministered on before. I, I really believe it's a blessing. And that is from 2 Samuel chapter 5. And I'm going to read from verse 17. Now, when the Philistines heard that they had anointed King David over all Israel, the Philistines went up to search for David. And David heard of it and went down to the stronghold. <clears throat> you must remember, when they heard that King David was going to unite Israel, the Philistines wanted to attack him and get rid of him. The Philistines also went and deployed themselves in the Valley of Rephaim. Now, you must understand, David was a warrior. <clears throat> He's an anointed king. He had a good army, but the Philistines had a great army as well. But look at what verse 17, uh, 19 says. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, so he comes to God and he asks God, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, Go, go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. So David went to Baal Perizim, and David defeated them there. And he said, The Lord has broken through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water. Therefore he called the name of that place Baal Perizim. And they left their images there, and David and his men carried them away. However, the Philistines were not happy, and we see in the next verse, <laughs> then the Philistines went up once again and deployed themselves in the valley of Rephim. Therefore David inquired of the Lord. Now I want you to notice this. David had just had victory from God. God had given David total victory over the Philistines. They come again to attack him. He could have been brazen enough to say, oh, well, God's with me. I'm going to tackle them. He said I'd defeat them, but he doesn't. The same thing crops up. And yet it says in the next verse, therefore David inquired of the Lord, and he said, you shall not go up. Circle around behind them. And, and come upon them in front of the mulberry trees. And it shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, then you shall advance quickly. For then the Lord will go out before you and strike the camp of the Philistines. Hmm. And David did so as the Lord commanded him. And he drove back the Philistines from Geba as far as Geza. Now, if, if, if we have a look at this, David inquires of the Lord. The Lord says, go attack them. I will defeat them for you. Second time, David still inquires of the Lord. Lord, must I attack them? You see, God knows what comes up against us. God knows Satan's strategies. God knows what the enemy wants to do to us. The second time, he said to David, no, 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 no. What you must do is you must come upon them in front of the mulberry trees. You must come behind them. And then he says, and when you hear the sound of marching <laughs> in the mulberry trees, can you imagine David standing there and the host of heaven, the angels, come marching down to fight the battle, and David will hear that in the mulberry trees. Isn't that amazing? And I think sometimes we just forget that there's a host of angels fighting with us and fighting for us when we come to God, when we inquire of God and God is on our side and God is with us. He sends the host of heaven to fight our battles. And so because God knew the enemy and what the enemy was up to, God gives David a different strategy. And not only a different strategy, but lets him hear the sound of the armies of heaven 
come in to help him. And of course, he drives the Philistines away and defeats them. Now, it's very important to understand that David was saying, in a sense, Lord, I'm not going till I know what you say. And church, I think this is so important for us. In facing the new year, we're in level three again, and things are happening, and um, we're facing all sorts of things. doesn't matter if the same thing happens over and over. Let us inquire of the Lord. Lord, what do you say? What should I do? David discovered how important it was to have breakthrough by knowing what God wants and then doing as God commanded. Um, David always did as the Lord commanded him, and God gave him the victory. But it wasn't just breakthrough. When it says the Lord uh, has broken through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water, first thing, David immediately gives the Lord the glory for the victory. David attributes the victory totally to God and does not claim the glory for himself. And church, that's a lesson. You know, we can boast about what, what's happened there, but if it's God who's shown us, God gets the glory. If you look at that word like a breakthrough of water, barbarism, it can mean Lord of breakthrough. But if you look at the Hebrew and expand it, it says like the bursting out of great waters. Can you imagine, David, can you imagine the victory he had to say that the Lord came and it was like the breakthrough of rushing or bursting waters that, you know, if, if you see a dam wall broken or there's rivers and suddenly there's storms, how it just washes everything away. And when we inquire of God, when we come before God and ask God what we should do, you will see how he'll just wipe away, how he'll just destroy what the enemy wants to bring against you. So if you're desiring a breakthrough this year, if you're desiring a breakthrough in something in your life right now, can I say, go inquire of the Lord. Get into the Word. Study the Word. Pray. And the big thing is, listen. <laughs> David gave time for God to speak to him, and he listened to what God had to say. So if you're looking for breakthrough, there are four small, powerful words that you need to take note of. What does God say? What does God say about your situation? What does God say about what you're facing? Um, <clears throat> From the 13th of December, I, I, I was really hammered by the enemy physically and in my body. And um, I said, I confessed to my son two nights in the first week after it happened. I said to him, which I've never done in my life. I said, son, I don't know if I'm going to make it. And, um, but I was trusting God and I was praising him and I was giving him glory for the blood. And on the Monday morning, went to do something in the office and I just thought, Lord, I don't even know if I'm going to make it home to walk across the road. I said, Lord, what do I do? And the Lord immediately fell in my heart, go to the doctor. And I, that's the last thing I wanted to do was I'm trusting him. <laughs> I love doctors. I've got nothing against medical doctors. I've got an amazing doctor, a doctor. <clears throat> I really admire him. But I went and found out what the problem was. And um, I just want to give God the glory. Because although I did not have COVID, so you can all relax, I did not have COVID. I was cleared of that. But I'd burn out and uh, vertigo and irregular blood pressure and a few things. But you know what? They took blood tests. And when I saw what they're taking blood tests for, I thought, wow, what does this doctor think is wrong with me? But I said, Lord, what do I do? And, and I just felt in my heart to declare the kingdom of God is in my life and that I have what the kingdom has and to declare that as we submit to the Lord, 
We can resist the devil and he will flee. And that's another thing that we can praise God for. And I did in this time. I said, Lord, I praise you that as, as I come before you and I submit to you and I worship you and you are my God, I can resist the devil and he will flee. That every single thing that comes up against me has to go. And you know, when the doctor phoned me, uh, also I had to go by a blood pressure, what do you call it, machine, and um, my son had to take my blood pressure twice a day. We had to send it to the doctor. And when he phoned me when he got the blood test results, he just said to me, your blood look is eight second. <laughs> In English, that means your blood pressure is excellent. And not only that, all the tests were negative. The only thing that popped up, he said, um, the, 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 you, you've got a bit of um, iron that needs to be built up. You, you lack iron a little bit. And that's all. But it was confessing God's word. It was asking God what to do. It was saying, God, what do I do in this situation that gave the breakthrough? And I give God all the glory and all the honor for it because he is God, he is supreme, and he is sovereign. So... <clears throat> We might face more shaking in 2021. We do not know. But if you want breakthrough, I want to share something with you that you need to do. Yes, that you and I need to do. And that's something I had to do during this time where I wasn't certain of what was happening. Break out of negative thinking. When things go wrong or things are happening around us like COVID, and I see so many Christians even with negative thinking, the Word tells us to think on the things that are good and pleasing and acceptable, to think on good things and to worship God and to praise God. If our faith is in God, we cannot have negative thinking. The second thing, you need to break out of your fears. And that was a hard one for me in the first week I was going through this. I, I, I sometimes feared that I wouldn't make it. And I said, Lord, I quoted that scripture that we praise God with this morning. I thank you. You equipped me with a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And in that power, I fear cannot exist. And you've got to overcome your fear. You've got to watch what you're saying because what you say can even create fear. You've got to Break out of depression or feeling of hopelessness. Maybe you're saying, ah, oh, that's not me. But you know what? I watch people and listen to people. And I think some people don't even recognize that they're getting a little hopeless or depressed. You've got to praise God. You've got to rejoice in Him. You've got to hear from Him. You've got to stand on your word. And you have to break out of all limitations. Stop feeling you're limited. All things are possible with Christ, and you can do all things and overcome all things. You are an overcomer in Jesus Christ. And I would just say, inquire of the Lord. Get into his word. But the key thing is listen to what the Lord says. Listen to that prompting of your heart and obey it. Because as David did that, he had breakthrough like these mighty rushing waters which defeated, which shattered Satan's plan against God's anointed. And we are all God's anointed. And the devil will come up against us. But when we inquire of God and we do what we need to do and we break out of certain things that, like, like the negativity and the fear and, 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 and the limitations we put in our life, we will see how God will move. So I'm believing for 2021, that the church is going to rise up and the church is going to inquire of God and we're going to hear from God and we're going to have breakthrough upon breakthrough like mighty rushing waters and we will stand victorious and God will get the glory. So I just want to inspire you this morning from that account of King David. Let us see what he did. Let us recognize the victories he had and let us apply it in our lives as well. Not only will we be victorious, but God will get the glory. So I pray if you if you want in a breakthrough, you'll not forget that God is with you. He will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. But sometimes we need to inquire of God, listen, and obey 
and you'll see your breakthrough come. And I pray that you will experience your breakthroughs in 2021 in Jesus' name. So the Lord bless you and have an amazing week. And we'll be back with you next Sunday. And God bless you.